flu is caused by a virus. It is a very tiny organism and millions of individual virus particles would fit on a pinhead. Its shape is flexible, a bit like a water balloon, and it has proteins sticking out around the outside. Hemagglutinin, known as HA, which the virus uses to enter a cell, and neuraminidase, or NA, which it uses to leave the cell. We currently know about 18 types of HA protein and 11 types of NA protein. Different strains of virus are named by which of these proteins they have. For example, H5N1, which is more commonly known as bird flu. Like our DNA, a flu virus has genetic material called RNA. Flu has H strands of RNA. When flu enters a cell, it uses the HA protein which binds to a receptor on the cell surface. This effectively unlocks a door, allowing the virus to enter. Once inside, the virus releases its genetic material, which travels to the cell's nucleus and is copied many times. These new RNA strands then hijack the cell's machinery to produce all the proteins and virus segments needed to build lots of new virus particles. The new virus building blocks come together at the cell surface and bud off. The cell is killed in the process and the new viruses go on to infect other cells. When a virus makes copies of itself, it often makes mistakes, called mutations, which lead to changes in the virus proteins. Often, these virus mutations mean the virus does not work anymore. But sometimes, it creates a new flu virus that can work the same or better than the original one. Flu can also change by reassortment. This happens when a cell is infected with two different virus strains. The RNA mixes up to produce a completely new strain of virus with different surface proteins. Our immune system fights flu infection by recognising the HA or NA proteins on the outside. If these change by mutation, then our immune system no longer sees them and can't fight the infection. Vaccines work by containing the HA and NA proteins of flu, which are recognised by our immune system. These make us produce antibodies so we can fight off an infection. But if a virus changes through mutation or reassortment, then these antibodies won't recognise the virus. This is why we need a new flu vaccine every year. Flu virus doesn't just infect people. Lots of different animals can also get flu, such as pigs, horses, dogs, tigers, and even seals. We think that ducks and other water birds are the natural hosts of flu. They get infected and spread the virus, but don't normally get ill. Flu virus usually infects the nose, throat, and lungs of an animal or person. As it is airborne, it can be passed on to others by coughs and sneezes, as well as by direct contact. Because of this and how quickly flu virus can change, allowing it to jump from one species of animal to another, the disease can be very hard to control. Our scientists are therefore working hard to find new ways to stop flu in its tracks. looks at a new type of antiviral drugs against influenza infection. My work focuses on how they function, so how they work, um, and I can do that by colouring the virus in different colours and looking down the microscope at how the virus moves within the cell in the presence of a drug, and this will give me an idea as to how the drugs are working in the virus life cycle. By better understanding how these drugs work, and we can then create a new treatment for influenza virus, both in humans and in animals. I do research on influenza A virus, and my work is primarily looking at how bird flu can jump into humans and other mammalian species. This is a hot topic in influenza research, because many bird flu strains have very high mortality rates in humans, and they can cause devastating outbreaks. What we do is we modify viruses and we look at how they grow in different types of cells from different species. If we can improve our understanding on how bird flu can jump into humans or other mammalian species, we might be able to improve control measures 
and reduce the impact of future outbreaks. Bird flu is a really big issue in places like Asia and the Middle East. Because it's so widespread, many countries have started to introduce vaccines against it. So flu viruses can evolve so rapidly that very quickly these uh, vaccines become quite useless and old. Therefore, our, our aim is to try and predict how these viruses are going to evolve and stay one step ahead of these viruses. And by doing this, we may be able to protect against future flu pandemics. What we are trying to do is control uh, swine flu in pigs and uh, we are doing that by studying the factors uh, that uh, can prevent transmission uh, of flu from animal to animal. For example, how many animals are in a pen, what is the effect of the temperature, what is the effect of the humidity of the air on transmission. And ultimately we would like to introduce vaccines which will stop transmission of flu from animal to animal that will ultimately uh, eradicate uh, flu from the pig herd and also prevent the sketching of flu from pigs. Mm -hmm.